is Rebecca Lewis, and I'm a registered dietitian and nutritionist and licensed dietitian. Thank you so much for joining us for this Healthy Living series. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about nutrition. You may have heard the phrase, you are what you eat. And this really is true, because the types of food we eat have a huge impact on nu nutrient levels in our body, as well as our overall health. So nutrition can be confusing. There's a bunch of mixed messages in the media, fad diets that are being thrown at us, and they're all so different, so we're not really sure which one is best for us, confusing food labels and marketing. So what I want to do for you today is just keep it simple. I want to go over four basic things that you can do that without a doubt will set you down a path toward good nutrition. So the first is to eat whole foods. The second is know where to look on food labels. The third is to avoid foods that don't spoil. And the fourth is to eat enough plants. Okay, so first I wanna talk about eating whole foods. And what I mean by that, I don't necessarily mean shopping at the grocery store whole foods. I mean minimally processed foods, or in other words, foods in which nothing bad has been added and nothing good has been removed. So typically, the closer the food is to the way it was harvested in nature, the healthy it is for us. So all the food in the produce, produce section of the grocery store is very easy to imagine growing in nature, whereas you can't really imagine a Cheez-It growing on a tree or a field of Oreos. These are very highly processed foods that are not very good for us. So for example, it's better to eat a whole apple than it is to drink apple juice. While 100% apple juice may not really have anything bad added into it, a lot of the good parts of the whole apple have been removed, such as the fiber. So anytime something is added or removed through processing, it alters the nutritional composition of that food, and it also changes the way that food is digested and absorbed in our bodies. So usually, the healthiest items don't have labels at all. So make sure that when you're grocery shopping, your cart is full of items that don't come in boxes and packages. And you may have heard the saying, shop the perimeter of the grocery store. And what that refers to is typically more of the whole natural foods are around the perimeter of the grocery store, whereas the center aisles tend to be filled with more highly processed foods. Now this isn't necessarily always true, but still a good rule of thumb to follow. Next, I wanna talk with you about knowing where to look on food labels. Now, not all foods that come in packages are necessarily bad for you. So knowing how to interpret a food label will help you find packaged foods that are healthy. One important thing to note on the nutrition facts label is the serving size, because all other nutrition information is based on the serving size. So when you take cracker option A, for example, you can see that there's 80 calories. That doesn't mean there's 80 calories in the box of crackers. It means there's 80 calories in five crackers, which is the serving size. And in cracker option B, there's 120 calories in six crackers, which is the serving size there. So serving sizes are determined by the food manufacturer and not by external agencies or nutrition experts. So what this means is that the serving size is not necessarily a recommendation for how much we should eat, but rather an average of what most people eat in one setting. So only comparing the nutrition facts labels on two products can make it difficult to determine which one is healthier. So for example, we're gonna take cracker option A and cracker option B. As you can see in cracker option A, the serving size is five crackers, whereas in crack cracker option B, the serving size is six crackers. So doing the math and making it a little bit easier to compare, we broke it down to where in cracker option B, the serving size is five crackers. So there's 100 ca calories in those five crackers. And when we compare these two crackers, we see that cracker option A may have a little bit less calories. So if you're watching your calories, you may go for that one. Um, but it also has a little bit more fat. The sodium on both of them are pretty much the same. Um, cracker option B has a little bit more carbohydrates. So maybe you were told to watch your carbohydrates. Um, so you may go for cracker A in that case. So really, as you can see, it's kind of hard to determine which is the better choice here. So the golden rule is to read the fine print or the list of ingredients. So when in doubt, skip to the fine print. And a good rule of thumb to follow is if you can't read it, don't eat it. So as you can see here, it's much easier to tell which option is better for us here. So cracker option A, which was the Ritz crackers, has a long list of ingredients that are difficult to understand and pronounce. Whereas cracker B, which is the Triscuits, has only three ingredients. We can understand them and we know what they are. Just whole grain wheat, canola oil, and sea salt. 
All right, the third concept I want to talk with you about is avoiding foods that don't spoil in their ready-to-eat state. So items that don't decompose over time are usually very highly processed while whole and healthful foods will spoil over time. And in other words, they'll undergo chemical changes. Now some of these signs of chemical change are a change in color, a change in texture, development of mold, or the development of an odor. Now what I mean by ready to eat state, I'm referring to the food just before it is eaten. So for example, a can of beans can sit on a shelf for months or even years without going bad. But once that can is open and prepared, it needs to be refrigerated and used up within a few days. Otherwise, it will spoil. So therefore, the beans are still considered a minimally processed food and a healthy option. It's also important to note that going stale is not the same thing as going bad. Many highly processed foods will go stale, which simply means the water has evaporated out of that product. So for example, the crackers in the previous example, they'll go stale, but they won't necessarily go bad, as they're still pretty processed. Um, another example is a McDonald's hamburger. You may have seen some videos of people doing an experiment, leaving a McDonald's hamburger in their car for months, and it still looks pretty much the same after those few months as it did when it was ordered. So what this means is that the McDonald's hamburger is very highly processed and not the best option for us. So finally, I wanna talk about eating enough plants. There is very compounding and compelling research that indicates that a diet of primarily unprocessed plant foods significantly reduces the risk of heart disease, stroke, obesity, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, many cancers, and the list goes on. So aim for a diet that is high in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and nuts and seeds. And maybe think of your meat, fish, poultry, and eggs as side items rather than the main meal itself. And when in doubt, even if you are going to have a large portion of meat at your meal, just adding in some of these plant-based foods, whole plant-based foods, will really help to boost your nutrition. I really hope that these concepts we've discussed today help to simplify nutrition and get you started on a path toward good nutrition and overall health. Thank you so much for joining us.